Okay, it's book club. Book club. This is September's book club because we were late with August's book club. Sorry. But Kathy Kirsten and I talk about Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, we have a lot to say about this book. Some good, some bad. Lily, uh, a good friend of ours, Sandy's daughter, Lily, really wanted us to read this book. And I'm glad I did. I think for someone Lily's age, Lily is uh, 13 or is she 14? She just turned 14, I think. Um, it's a perfect, it's a, I understand why she really loved this book. Uh, so uh, if you read along, I hope you enjoy our conversation. If not, you can push pause and pick up the book and uh, give it a read. It's kind of cool. It's a novel written in kind of an interview um, documentary type format. So it's a very interesting and creative way to write a fiction. So I think we have a good conversation. We talk about a lot of other things too. We talk about sexuality. We talk about next month's book club book. We are going to read Forever by Judy Bloom, and then The Gift by Julia Garwood. Thank you, Halston. Julia Garwood. I don't know if we're going to do both books in the same month or one forever in October and The Gift in November, but stay tuned. I'll post on that uh, about that on Instagram. So I hope you enjoy this conversation, this book club with Kathy and Kirsten about Daisy Jones and the Six. Mm-hmm. I came in, I was telling Kathy today, I have tennis elbow, which is so fun. Uh, not at all. But my trainer has been breaking up the scar tissue, kind of breaking up the fascia. And he put this like super intense, really stinky ointment all over me. It wasn't really an ointment. It was more like uh, liniment. (laughs) I feel like it was a liniment. He put it all over and then put this, I have a brace. He put the brace back on and he was like, don't wash it off for a while. And I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. I'm going to this podcast stinky, stinky two ways. Stinky, I just worked out, and stinky, I have liniment on my arm, so I apologize. I can't smell I, it. I can't smell it. I smell like big exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to say liniment. Yeah. Liniment's right. great, right? That's what it's a good word. It's right? in like a little bitty glass. It looks like a almost like a crown royal bottle, but it's glass. And it's brown and it's oily liquid. Yeah, it literally is. No (laughs) label. It's a liniment. I was like, this is, I'm at the apothecary. (laughs) You know, he's apothecary in my elbow. It's really cool. It smells He's mixing it in the back. Like makes my eyes burn. But he swears by this stuff. I guess he gets it somewhere in Washington or somewhere. I don't know. Anyway. Which doctor? If it works. It does work. You know what? Every time he uh, rubs the fascia out the next day, I have almost like I have almost no pain and it stays that way longer and longer as time goes by. So I'm hoping that's great. We get to it and he's been working, you know, I'm working it out. So it sucks to get older. I'm like, feel like I'm falling apart. I have to wrap my hamstring now and I have this <laughs> liniment elbow and then I have shoulder problem. It's and, hard. Uh-huh. I didn't really take it seriously with um, my parents or just older people. And by older people, I'm talking like five or 10 years older Yeah, who mm-hmm. would complain about ailments and aches and pains and not recovering faster. And I just think, oh, they're not me. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be you. Yeah. And that has, of course, bit me in the ass because all of a sudden, like late 40s hit and I was like, oh my God, I'm literally falling apart. I feel like <laughs> My teeth, my teeth are fine, but like, I feel like my teeth are going to just start dropping out of my head. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like parts are just going to start falling off. Because uh, I just lose a limb. <laughs> Suddenly you have leprosy. Yes. <laughs> it's just like nothing recovers. I fell um, during the beginning of the pandemic. I fell when I was out walking the dogs and it wasn't like a, I didn't break anything. I didn't, but I totally scraped up my knee like old school like Mm -hmm. elementary school (laughs) scraped knee raspberry and strawberry strawberry Strawberry. it it is I mean I wish I was wearing shorts so I could show you the scar is so intense it is a it's going to be a lifelong scar because (laughs) I got this in my late 40s (laughs) but it's the sort of thing that like if my kids had gotten it it would be gone yeah in Mm -hmm. like two months isn't that crazy yeah Yeah. I, I scarred when I fell last year Man, that scar is big and I can't get rid of it. Uh, uh, I don't know what to do to get rid of it, but I, I can't, I'm so surprised I never scarred either. I mean, never, but I do now. Mm. It stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> Getting older. Yeah. I don't like it. 
Okay, so book club, <laughs> Daisy Jones and okay. the Six. What do you think? We have to remember Lily refer, referred this. Why should I say her last name? I don't know. Lily referred this. Mm-hmm. Maybe take her last name out, Halston. So Sandy's daughter, Lily, referred uh, or asked me, requested, not referred, requested that we read this book for book club, which makes me nervous because I do have some negative things to say about the book. Mm-hmm. Not, all, not, not all my commentary is not going to be negative. But I don't want to hurt Lily's feelings because this is like her favorite author and one of her favorite books ever. So I apologize in advance, Lily. (laughs) If anything I say hurts your feelings, I liked the book, but I do have some negative things to say about the book. Yeah, but also I think there's a huge age difference Mm -hmm. between us (laughs) and Lily. I was going to discuss that also, yes. Yes, and so things that are compelling when Mm -hmm. one is younger, and I'm not talking about it has nothing to do with like being immature or anything like that. She's an incredibly mature young lady. Yeah. Um, And it is incredibly mature that a 13-year-old read and enjoyed and adored this book and got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the things that are compelling, like even just the idea of romance and unrequited or not, it wasn't unrequited, but like this tension, Mm -hmm. like this sort of years long Mm -hmm. tension, I think it would, would have been a lot more compelling to me as a younger person that said, I loved the book. I Mm -hmm. actually did love it. Yeah. I thought it was really well done. I really loved the style that it was done. It was sort of written like as a faux journalistic, um, faux documentary, Mm -hmm. um, style. And like, to the point where at one point I looked up, I was like, wait a minute, is this, is Daisy Jones? Like, was she an actual person? Like, (laughs) Oh no, no, of course not. It's a novel. It's, (laughs) but, um, but for a second, I got carried away by that. But at the same time, I think that younger me would have adored the book the right. way that Lily does. I liked it. I just thought it was well written and um, enjoyable. But um, when I was, I know that younger me would have just been like, oh, will they, won't they? Like <laughs> yeah, just yeah. caught up in the romance of it. And I feel like late 40s me is less romantic. <laughs> yeah, right. More pragmatic, more yeah. practical. You're no longer on Team Edward. Now you're on Team Jacob. <laughs> I keep saying that to my kids. I was like, when you're my age, you'll be totally Team Jacob. Because Edward is creepy AF. Okay, I never watched this. I did read that book, so I, I didn't. I never got into the Twilight, but um, we had that experience watching The Hunger Games with our kids. Oh, yeah. Richard and I had read The Hunger Games books, and I know when I was younger, I would have been like, Gail all the way. And I'm like, but Pete is such a nice guy. I know, right? He's a nice young man. He's a fine young man. And he has skills. He can make yes. bread. You'll always eat with Peter, right? Yeah, right? I guess you'll always eat with Gail too because he was a hunter, but yeah. yeah, bread is also valuable. And if Katniss is a hunter, wouldn't you like bread to go with your meat? Yes, I'm here, yeah. No, yeah, I, I felt that way too about this book. So I feel like, I wonder if we should give a brief synopsis of the book before we talk to it, so about it. Uh, just now figuring that out for a format. How many books in are we? <laughs> but this book is a fiction. It's a mm-hmm. novel about a fake band. It's basically kind of like if Stevie Nicks joined the Eagles, right? Something like that. A singer songwriter that joins a group of uh, that has a singer songwriter and then they become this super amazing group. And it is written, like you said, in a kind of a journalistic interview type format not question answer but it's like reading a rolling stone a really good deep rolling stone piece yes it is and interesting characters uh characters were defined i knew who everybody was right off the bat um didn't get anybody confused uh and i thought it was a really cool way to write a novel i agree um what do you think about this book i thought it was an interesting way to write it i didn't like it yeah. It actually bothered me a little bit just because it yeah, was. Yeah, that's the Kathy we know and love. <laughs> She's back. I'm kind of with her. I'm um, kind of with her. I just, it felt like it, maybe it was a Rolling Stones article, but I'm okay with reading an article, not a novel. Like why I understand when you're in a conversation, you don't have full sentences, but reading it when it's not a full sentence or it's a stream of consciousness thought, it like really, it got very old for me very quickly. I did not love the format of it. I had similar feelings to the book that we read. And I don't even, it's so embarrassed to say it. I don't even remember the name of it. 
it was like two books ago, maybe with they were all in London and they they had the notebook where they someone found the notebook oh, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. picked it up. Oh, the authenticity up. project. The authenticity project. Yeah. It reminded me of that. I felt like oh. there were pieces of it that were a bit sophomoric, and I think that oh. was one of it. It was I was like, and I kept going. I get it. They're writing a great album. I get it. They're writing a great album. I get it. Eddie hates being in the band, but Eddie never left the band. He, you know, Mm -hmm. there's like where I kept thinking they're setting things up that aren't paying off enough for me. There's not enough drama for me. There should have been more. I wanted the main character to fall off the wagon. I wanted more dynamic in it, but for to, to me, I felt like I knew what it, it was extremely predictable mm-hmm. because I wanted the unpredictability of he's going to fall. And he, you know, he does have a moment of temptation, but I wanted him to, I wanted him to sleep with Daisy and I wanted him to get completely back in the black hole and then dig himself out of it again. I wanted him to have some, a bigger redemption story. His redemption story happened too early for me. Because in the very beginning, he goes off in a ditch, is in terrible shape, and then gets his life in order, and we're in, like, you know, page 50. And then for the rest of the time, he's boringly stable. You know, (laughs) I understand the struggle of should I, would I, could I, this is really hard. But I wanted him to fail and then redeem himself. Instead of having Daisy be the failure the whole time in her Mm. own self-care, you know. I didn't like that part. I felt like that was that was something that I understood why it worked mm-hmm. for Lily, but that didn't work for me. It just wasn't entertaining enough for me. And I kept going, I get it. I get it. We're writing an album. And you keep talking about these lyrics. I don't care. I, I can't listen to the song. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's the other thing is that when you're young, you can listen to a song a hundred, yes. like yeah. 200, 300, and a thousand times. very I, much. Halston, I'm not talking yes. about you musicians because <laughs> yes. obviously musicians can listen to a song a billion times. But other than that, it's like very young people who can listen to a song a million times mm-hmm. and reinterpret it and go, oh my God, this is what that meant. Yeah. Now I'm like suddenly the mom who's singing along to the radio and my kids are like, uh, those aren't the words. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm like, I don't really care. And I remember being mortified when my parents did that, thinking, how could they not know? How could they not care? Yeah, yeah. Like, how could they not listen to this 150 times? And um, yeah, so I think that some of that is like an age related thing of like, you know, going through the writing of the songs Mm -hmm. like that is really fascinating for when you're in that space. But when you're not in that space anymore, it's like, okay, chop, chop. We get it. You're writing a song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're gay writing a song. You're yeah, fighting while on. writing a song. Yeah. You're jockeying for power while writing a song. And now who gets to write the song? And now you're still writing a song. And you're still writing a song. So, but let's talk about a couple of of like story plots or whatever. Karen and Graham, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think about that? Their story arc? Because they were both band members. Graham is the lead singer's brother. Karen is a keyboardist. And they end up having kind of a secret affair behind everybody's back. What did you think? And then she ends up pregnant. And I'm spoiler alert, by the way, if anybody hasn't read the book. (laughs) And then decides to have an abortion and it completely destroys everything. What did you think about that storyline? I felt like it was uh, a little more real than anything else in the book. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I didn't. I don't know. I, I, what struck me about that is, um, he was more in love with her than she was with him. Mm-hmm. She knew it. He didn't. Right. They had two totally different dreams. She kept continuing this relationship, which I thought she's either completely lying to herself or she's a complete asshole. She needs to like, yes. what the fuck should have get off know. the pot. And then when she ended up pregnant, I, I actually really respected her point of view. Not that mm-hmm. I'm a pro abortion or pro I am pro choice. I believe that you should be able to choose whatever you want. I would not say I'm pro abortion per se, <laughs> but when she chose to terminate her pregnancy, because she was like, I'm not going to want, I don't want to raise a child. Then I was like, well, you've been fucking this whole time without protection. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, that part's very unclear. Well, I, it is unclear, but I yeah. got mad at her for putting yeah. herself in that position in the first place. If you don't want a child, you know how to prevent that. 
I mean, 99.9% yeah. effective for the pill. Come on. And it's the 70s, whatever. But the pill was around in the 70s, and I think mm-hmm. it was still pretty effective. So <laughs> And condoms have been around right, for, for a long, long time. time. <laughs> and and yeah, so I don't know. I, I liked I liked that her perspective of not wanting to be a mom was presented. Mm-hmm. I really did. But I didn't like that she uh, was irresponsible with herself. And maybe that's unrealistic of me since she's in a rock band and she's clearly, you know, but yeah, I just kept going. Why weren't you on the pill then? God, I was more um, worried I, about her being irresponsible with his um, feelings. feelings because he adored her. Like yeah. he just, but I felt like her. she didn't. She didn't lead that on. Sure, she was having sex with him, but she wasn't like I'm so in love with you. She never gave him the impression. Like I feel like she was who she was the entire time. Mm-hmm. It was not surprising that she was like, I don't want to be a mom. This is not what I want. Like that was not shocking or whatever. That was her character Mm -hmm. from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't. No, I agree. She was, she was totally authentic. It's Mm -hmm. just that when somebody, he just worshiped her. He did. So when somebody is that, it's like, you have to have a boundary of like. Then she shouldn't have been sleeping. Yeah. She shouldn't have. She should have stopped a long time ago because Mm -hmm. I think that's easier said than done sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's what I mean. It was confusing. Is she lie? Was she is everything was told right, present day in past tense, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we did. So they'd already lived through it. So her perspective is what it is. I would have liked for her perspective maybe to have been different. Say, this is how I felt. What a mistake. Or this is what I felt. I should have cut it off. Or this is what I felt. And this was where my dysfunction was. But the, she was very like, it is what it is. This is what I wanted, you know? And maybe that's, that's, yeah, but I think that was the style to like, if you've seen, Mm -hmm. you know, when you watch those seventies documentaries about bands from the seventies and they're just like, yeah, he was kind of a jerk and you know, they're just (laughs) sort of dispassionately. Who is the other guy at the end who is just like, yeah, I got nothing else to say. It is what it was. Warren. Warren. Right. He was the one who was just like, yeah, all right. And he was that way through the whole thing, you know, like just, this is what it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe she was more in that space. I don't know. So what do you think about Camila? Is that how you say her name? Camila? The wife. Mm-hmm. Um, of the lead singer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any thoughts about Camila? I think you do, Kathy. <laughs> I mean, she was uh, she was interesting. She was very strong in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not sure that her choices always made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But she was a very strong person in what she wanted. And she got what she wanted for the most part. (laughs) Um, And she knew what she was willing to tolerate. Yeah. Which would not necessarily have been my choice, but, you know. Right. What do you think about her? I don't have a lot to say about her. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that she got what she wanted and she. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about her. Nothing to say about Camilla. Uh, She obviously pushed your buttons. Well, no, I, (laughs) no, that's actually, uh, she didn't push my buttons. I just, well, maybe she did. Um, I related to her some, you know, because I'm married to somebody who is, um, in the spotlight and she's, she was not in the spotlight, but. But and I relate to like being the person at home taking care of the kids while they go off and pursue a big larger than life dream. But I I definitely would not tolerate hanky panky on the road. Mm-hmm. I definitely would not be like um, he loves you Daisy Jones and uh, but he's mine. I, uh, that conversation would not have happened. <laughs> no. So and I didn't understand her a lot of the time. I really kind of she was a bit of a head scratcher sometimes, and then sometimes I really understood her. You know, where you go, sometimes you get a sense or sometimes I get a sense that Bert's really in a bad way and I uh, don't fly to him, but I definitely, you know, go to my girls and go, I think your dad's in kind of needs you. So why don't you call him, FaceTime him and and help help him out a little bit? Because, you know, sometimes that life is a little bit intense. It's not like a nine to fiver. Mm -hmm. So. I understood that piece of her, but, but I don't know. I was just trying to get a sense of what you felt about, if, if anything, I guess nothing much <laughs> about her. Um, 
Okay, that's the book club. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you have some notes there. What do you have on your notes? Oh, well, the notes, this is just um, the, I'm going to say one other thing about the style. Like, I don't it's understand just... why the author decided to put her voice in for like Two six seconds. sentences at the end of the book. Mm-hmm. It was so jarring and misplaced, in my opinion. I was like, I don't get it. I felt what? it to be indulgent. I was like, why? I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it either. I think if you were a young reader, it would be a, oh, that's their daughter, right? Moment. Oh, I felt like that was obvious. Yeah. I feel like it was talked about at the beginning of the book, wasn't it? Um, I don't remember. Uh, I, I've been reading this book for a while. Oh. I had a hard time getting through the book because I got very, very bored in the middle. I got really bored um, with the writing a song and work on those lyric and it was going yeah da 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 and then he said da 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 and then I said da and I was like I don't give a shit <laughs> give me some drama <laughs> I need to have something happen besides <laughs> being a voyeur while you're wa- reading an album I mean writing an album I don't know anyway what what's your little note oh the, it's not my notes these are um questions and topics for discussion oh and, that's where oh, I was yes. going <laughs> yes <laughs> Then you do it. She just this bookmarked is your it. book club. Uh, this is your podcast. That's what I was doing. I thought you had something else. No. But you have two post-its there. Uh, you were just teasing me. It was a tease. Yeah. I read through these and I have to say I wasn't crazy about these questions. Were you? I wasn't, but um, there was one that struck out. I wonder if it's oh the same God. one I did. I did not even um, read the questions. Oh, good. <laughs> so um, Daisy says... I was just supposed to be the inspiration for some man's great idea. I had absolutely no interest in being someone else's muse. Um, I'm not interested in their questions about this, but that sort of triggered some things in me. Um, I, I think that it made me happy that Lily and maybe younger girls are reading this because um, that was something that I, I didn't identify with. I identified when I was younger, I was like, I had the, you know, the boyfriend in a band and I was like, oh yeah, like write a song about me. Like I had the playwright boyfriend. It was like, oh yeah, write a play about me. <laughs> like I wanted to be a muse, uh-huh. like a hundred percent. And I was delighted when somebody painted a picture of me or wrote a play about me or whatever. And I know that sounds, I mean, I guess that's painting me out to be incredibly shallow. This is no, young me. I'm not talking a teenager. about present me. It paints you out to be a teenager. Well, <laughs> yeah, I and, think so. And in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> my early 20s. But yeah, I really, I it's like that idea of the muse. It's like, oh, yes, like to be that important to somebody that yeah. they would mm-hmm. like memorialize you forever. Um, it, um, And so I loved that Daisy was like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. No, I... I write my own stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm not all about that. I think that I just thought in terms of role model wise, it was like, oh, I'm glad that um, fiction is going in that direction is sort of keeping up with the times, even though this is a seventies, uh, right. it's set mm-hmm. in the seventies. It had a very now um, mentality mm-hmm. in that way. Yeah. Definitely not with her drug use. Yeah. No, that no, no. may not have been a great example. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like that one piece of or her, her marriage. Is, yes. Or I <laughs> or, mean, or any, yeah, any, any her behavior, that she but made. her yes. integrity with her art, <laughs> but her integrity, <laughs> her integrity with her art, not her integrity. Cause <laughs> Period. she's out of right. integrity in her marriage. She was out of integrity with her drug use. Yeah. Just with her art, with her yeah. friends, with her art. She was with her friends. Yeah. With her art. She was right on track. Yeah. I but think. with her work, it was her work. And yeah. so, yeah, that's what I, w- that w- that's, for me is what I would like the takeaway to be <laughs> is that she's a strong female uh, character that, yeah, that her work is her work and that, and, th- but that also that, you know, personality wise or integrity wise, like, um, do you guys know that Taylor Swift song, the man? Oh, I do, but not, it's I'm not so super good. familiar with it. And it yeah. just says if, uh, if I was a man, then I'd be the man. And she talks about, like yes is a really good song it's really good i every time it comes on i just get tears in my eyes and i'm always like yes yes right and um that's what it made me think about that it's like yeah uh, yeah she was you know using and abusing her privilege and um but 
it was nothing different than any of the rock star, the male rock yeah, stars she was of that like a time yeah. were doing. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm talking about is that in her work that it was like, no, my work matters just mm-hmm. as much as all these men. Mm-hmm. Um, and she behaved like the men too. Yeah. Or she partied <laughs> at the Chateau Marmont. Yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. Um, uh, oh, this one I was going to Daisy, Camilla, Simone. And Karen are each very different embodiments of female strength and creativity. Who are you most drawn to and why? Well, um, I mean, I think it's hard to be drawn to Simone. I feel like she's such an ancillary character. She was, I don't even know who she is really. I mean, she was a good friend. She was a good friend. Yeah. I don't know her as a more than that. Right, right. Not drawn to anybody. Wait, what are the other choices? Daisy, Camilla, or Karen? Uh huh. That is a tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> right, who are you drawn to? Uh, well, I was I'm most related to Camilla only because we uh-huh. have some parallels. Um, who I was most drawn to was Daisy because she was so dynamic. Yeah. But but I'm most um, related to Camilla. Um, I mean, Daisy was a dynamic character. Mm-hmm. And an interesting character. Always interested to see what she would do next. Billy got boring real fast for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. was so bored by him. I was like, yeah. <laughs> he should have fallen off the wagon. I'm telling yeah. you, he should have struggled more with addiction. He had addiction and then was like, all done. Not that he didn't have moments of it being, quote, tough. Right. But he never. The, and he talked know, about his struggle, but it wasn't. You didn't actually feel the tension. No, they talked about it. And yeah. how many rock stars do you know never fall off the wagon? Right. And I'm sorry, how many addicts, real addicts, do you know that go to rehab one time and they're and one and done? <laughs> That's so unrealistic. <laughs> And not that I, not that I am happy that people fall off the wagon, just that that's just not reality, especially living in that world. I would imagine with everybody else drinking, I just go to bed early. Gee, what a page turner. (laughs) Can't wait to see what you do tomorrow night. Oh, go to bed early. Perfect. That's how I like my rock stars. Denim on denim and go to bed early. (laughs) You know, I kept wanting him to be a fucking rock star for five seconds and be with Daisy in that world for five minutes of the book and then go back to Camilla and have to build it up again and have to start over again. You know, have a little bit more of that. If he had just fallen off the wagon one time, I think I would have liked the book a lot better. I think the book was more about Daisy. I mean, I think that was the point. Like she was the sole character in this book and it was written around her yeah so everybody else was sort of side characters Mm -hmm. so they are of course making a tv show out of it yeah and i could see it actually better as a film or television piece than i do a book yes it's i think it's going to be a great tv show i think it will because you'll experience this in a like mm, you can hear the songs they're writing (laughs) one would hope right you know so that that and all part of it i kept going I, I'm sorry. I just don't read lyrics to songs. I, that's not I listen to a song being sung. I don't go, let me read the lyrics to that Fleetwood Mac song. It was really good. Let me just go, you know, <laughs> I see your gypsy. <laughs> you know? yeah, but a lot of people do, though. It, or a lot of like people who are really into music. And such a niche, and younger people. That's very niche. But, though, uh, don't do you they think? really read the lyrics or are they just looking at them on the screen to learn them to sing along? Or I don't know that somebody picks up a, like a, a sheet music or whatever and reads lyrics from top to bottom. I think Lily should have been part of this book club. <laughs> oh, she should maybe. have been. Oh, but I don't know if I don't know. Maybe not. I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll book club it with her. We can bring her back. That's a good oh, idea. There you go. Um, well, who was the person you most related to or were most drawn to? That was the question. I thought Karen was interesting, but I wouldn't say that I was really drawn to her. I thought she was interesting in that she really in that she wasn't she was sort of the anti Daisy in some ways. Like she wasn't a, a showy or um, um, dynamic character. I was interested in but, Daisy because Daisy was always doing interesting things. Right. The flip side of that though is that 
Karen was like Daisy and that she was, you know, she stuck to her convictions. Yeah. And she's she like, was this is it. who I am. Yeah. And you're not going to dictate your vision of me to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I guess there are a few strong female characters. If you're old enough, and we are, (laughs) to have your own memories of the 70s, do you feel the author captured that time period well? I I don't don't feel like like I I was a child then. I I don't don't feel like I was, I'm old. I mean, yes, I was alive in the 70s, Mm -hmm. but I was young in the 70s. And I don't, I certainly wasn't um, aware of, of rock and um, I don't know. So no. You don't, don't, you don't know. So. You don't, you yeah. Don't, I don't think so either. I feel like I was a child. I wasn't really paying attention to music at that point. Like I was, yeah. um, my dad and my mom were both very into pop Bueller mm-hmm. music. Um, and queen Fleetwood Mac journey, Boston, um, Doobie brothers, um, Credence, even though Credence was a little before all of those guys were constantly on in my house and my parents were young parents. So my mom in particular was uh, really into the stories of the bands. So she would tell me like the stories of what was going on in Fleetwood Mac. Cause you know, when rumors dropped, I think rumors was when I was really young. Um, there was so much going on in that band that dictated the writing of that album, which was one of the best albums of all time. And my mom used to tell me these stories. And as I got older, I became interested like Mm -hmm. Lily probably is. And I started researching the stuff she had told me and found out how crazy Fleetwood Mac in particular was with all this interrelationship drama and, um, so for mm-hmm. me, I thought she, she, I th- think they did. I didn't necessarily feel like it was in the seventies per se, like, but I felt like it was what one particular band that I know about in the seventies probably would have stories like that, you know, where I know, you know, John and Christy McVie were married and, and they broke up in the middle of this, you know, anyway, all this real life drama, I feel like she probably drew from that somehow in creating this other rock group. Um, but, but I, I don't know that it specifically reminded me of the seventies. Cause I'm like you, I was young. It just rem- reminded me of what my parents talked about my mom mm-hmm. in particular. What, um, what bands or what kind of music did your parents listen to? Kathy? They didn't like, we didn't have music on in the house. Like that was never a part of our life. Like when you were wow. talking about that, I was like, wow, my house was not constantly. like that at all. No, constantly. Not at all. My dad bought this log cabin in the woods, no heat, but we had stereo speakers everywhere. <laughs> There were everywhere. Like the stereo turntable was in the living room and speaker wire just went everywhere because every other weekend it was a bachelor pad. Three men lived there and they had party after party after party. (laughs) I had music, right? So then on the weekends I was there, we, that house was in such disrepair. We were working on the house or chopping firewood or doing something work related Every weekend I was there. So they put the music on because my dad's always mechanic shop always had music on. And my mom always had music on when she was cleaning in the house. She was either watching TV or had a record player on. Um, it's funny. I was thinking about that. I was like, we got a record player and like we never used it. Like huh. I remember buying an album at like in high school and like being one of the like only people to use it. My bro- my older brother was really into music, but that was very separate. It was like in his room by himself, whatever. Mm-hmm. It was not a part of our family. How crazy. Yeah. So different, right? Did yeah. you have music growing up? My dad um, was really into like old school country, like um, Johnny Wayland. Cash and yeah. Waylon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Waylon, <laughs> Willie. Um, yeah. Um, our dog growing up was Willie. Willie Nelson. <laughs> Willie Nelson Love. Yeah. My uncle was into that. Mm-hmm. Out- it's called Outlaw Country. Outlaw. I'm into that now. But that's not what my dad listened to. My dad was rock and roll. Um, 
And at the time, rock and roll was the Eagles and, you know, yeah. what we would probably call soft rock now or country rock or maybe even country. Or classic. Or <laughs> classic. <laughs> it's classic we rock. We the classic stage. <laughs> oh, my God. The 90s is considered like classic now, but in some radio stations, okay, I'm like, really what? <laughs> okay. No, it's not. It's uh, Smells like teen spirit is 30 years old. Really? Smells like teen spirit is 30 years old. Slightly horrifying. <laughs> that is terrible. Like terrible. This year is 30 years old. I can't even believe it. I remember when that album came out. I was living in New York City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does not feel like that, no, that was 30 be, years ago. That can't be right because I was I would have only been 21. Mm-hmm. So anyway, but yeah, it's 30 years old. Crazy, huh? All right. Well, how do we how do we what what else should we talk about with this book? Anything else? <laughs> I didn't feel like there was a lot to talk about, really. It wasn't a meaty book. There were not not a lot of controversial things, not a lot of dynamics, actually, to me. Um, I wouldn't read it again, but I, I see what you're saying, and I kind of agree with you. Someone like yes. in a different age group, we've so many books we've read have been like that. Like that girl wash your mm-hmm. face. I was like, if I had been 20... I would have loved this book, but at 45 or whenever it was, I read it. I was like, I don't need any of this stuff. That's how I feel about this book. If I had been young, probably in my, even in my early twenties, I would have really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But as a 51 year old, I was really bored. (laughs) And that's Uh, when I I was reading it. I was thinking, I was like, I get why Lily likes this. Yeah, totally. I I do too. hundred percent. Yeah. Not with her right now, but (laughs) I get why she likes it. And at the end, like all of the, all of the lyrics to all of the songs are laid out in yeah. like pages and pages and pages of songs, which for somebody who's really into that and who really fell in love with these characters, I could see that being really cool. Yeah, um, I could too. But I kind of flipped over that. I was like, oh yeah, we were there when she wrote them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah we, we, I, 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 I didn't read them. <laughs> I, they don't mean anything to me if I can't hear them. Yeah. That's my perspective is I was like, it's, it's not... Music is not just about the words. It's about the whole thing, you know? You can take several, I'm sure you can find several songs where the words are okay, and then you put the music with it, and it comes alive. So I don't know. I I just passed through it, too. I went, let's get back there to those questions. And I I didn't like any of their discussion questions. I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, agreed. They weren't great. Um, But is this an actual teen book or no? No. No. No, and actually, um, I, I've seen a lot of friends sort of chatting about it on um, social media and oh, yeah? who really were into it. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Yeah, okay. it resonates for a lot of people. Completely. And I think as a TV show, as I was reading it, I thought this would be a really good TV show because I would like to see these characters and you can cast it in so many different ways. And <laughs> Do you that know would who be plays really Daisy? No. Elvis's granddaughter. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it'll probably make a really good TV show. It'd be fun. Lily got to meet the author Mm -hmm. and the author signed her copy. She was super excited. (laughs) And I heard she has this other book about like seven husbands or something. She has a couple of books. She has a lot. Yeah. Right. The seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And there's a new one, Malibu Rising. That's that again, people have enjoyed. Yeah, I heard this uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is supposed to be really good. Um, but this is supposed to be really good. <laughs> so I don't know, you never know. Everybody yeah, has maybe a different Maybe if it was a straight fiction, not written in this style, I would like it better. Well, it's definitely very easy. I thought it was easy to read. I know what you mean about the conversational piece of it, but I didn't really get super hung up on that. I, I just kept kind of... It, it felt like it made it very slow reading for me. Uh, I, it was very slow reading for me too. I felt very slow. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I attributed it to. Maybe Did not. you read it really fast? I think I read it pretty fast. I yeah. read it a while ago. Um, I don't like last year or something. And then I started to reread it. I did not get very far the second time because mm-hmm. I've already read it. <laughs> already read it. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So let's move on then from Daisy Jones and the six. So I think what we were talking about yesterday at our Girl Scout meeting was that we would start reading different genres, right? And just really, instead of focusing on what's new, what's great, self-help, whatever, 
let's just focus on a on a on a genre. So the next genre, the genre we're gonna do is from my cousin Laura's recommendation is a romance <laughs> novel, and here's what she said. Um, let me see. I have it in her text. I pulled her text up so I would have it. And of course, now it is gone. Um, She said, The Gift by Julia Garwood. It's fun, classic romance book and well-written. That's what she said. That was her number one suggestion if we were going to read romance. So I think we got to do it. The Gift, right? We clearly have to. I love this idea (laughs) so much. I feel like it takes so much pressure off um in some ways because when you read a book like this book um it's it's gotten good reviews it's a new york times bestseller um etc etc and and also a dear friend lily really enjoyed it so there's like the pressure of like you not enjoying it the way that lily enjoyed it and you Mm -hmm. do feel pressure when you've been recommended a book and then you feel like it's an F you to the person who recommended it. And it's not, it's just, we all have our own experience with it. I love the idea of like a romance is totally out of left field for all of us. (laughs) I've never read a romance novel. I know I didn't even read 50 shades of gray. I was like, I don't have time for that that shit. You did. (laughs) Was it good? How do you define good? I mean, <laughs> your boat, you shook your head I, yeah, in a word. <laughs> was it I like mean, smut or was it like good? You know, because what she says is she they have like plots and stuff in the ones that she reads. It's not just like, and he sucked her titty and then he sucked her titty, you know? Yeah. I thought the Fifty Shades of Grey books were absurd, like absolutely absurd. <laughs> I, the story was ridiculous. <laughs> why i haven't even seen the movie from the character point it was like what is this a complete character is this a real person like you really expect me to believe that this is the way a real person behaves and also person being the male or female lead all of them all of them all of them them. everyone everyone in the whole damn in the whole series um i thought it was absurd um (laughs) <laughs> but you know it was it was fan fiction based on the twilight series so he's edward and she's whatever. i did not know that yeah that's she wrote it originally as fan fiction and um really so, well yeah. i don't even know what fan fiction is i've um, never heard well this fan term. fiction can be anything from you could like be like oh the Harry Potter series is done. So I'm going to write what, you know, Harry Potter as a 50 year old, like oh, teaching at Hogwarts or whatever you could do that. Or in this case, it was like, she took the the characters, the structure. It's like, what if instead of vampires, he was a very successful businessman who was into S and M and, you know, and then there's the, the ingenue who meets him and uh-huh. then what happens. And, um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know the plot. I just knew it was very sexual. Yeah, I mean, that's basically all that happens. But it's so yeah. absurd because he's he's not just rich. He's like Jeff Bezos rich. Like he's like yeah. the richest guy <laughs> right around. And so it it's it's crazy. I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's a story that would never happen in real life or yeah, the story it, would happen ludicrous. to one person. Like it's, <laughs> it would happen maybe. to one person maybe. and that's it. <laughs> yeah. The story's but, ludicrous, you said. Yeah. Like it's just, it's not very good and it's not like, it's not realistic. It's not, I don't know. It, whatever. It was fine. They were fun reads, Mm -hmm. but it was not, it was not. Yeah. There were, uh, there were a lot of LOL moments (laughs) reading it going, Oh, (laughs) wow. What a kick. (laughs) And Richard was so excited. He was like, Oh yeah, you're reading the, this is exciting. Like thinking, Oh my God, my wife is reading sex books. And I'm like, I, he's like, are you turned on? I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> because and he's like, why? Everybody, you know, it's supposed to be so sexy. I said, it's crazy. These people are crazy. Right? I'm like, but- I can't take this seriously. I'm a reader. So then why was it such it, a sensation? No, I just say, I think it was, parts of it were definitely sexy. Like it, I'm, I don't know. But that was like, I feel like that was not, not, if you went for that, then you got that. But mm. if you went for a story, which is sort of what you sort of hope for when you're reading fiction that was missing. So if you went for sex, you got sex and that's Correct. all you got. 
Yeah. Okay. It was a sin say. I mean, yeah. Inarguably, everybody read that book except me. Mm-hmm. Everybody read that book. I don't think I know anybody who didn't read that book. Maybe Sandy didn't read it, <laughs> but I didn't read that book. I was like, I don't want to waste my time. I, that's what I thought. I thought I'm not going to like it. I'm not like a not sexual person, but I'd rather read a book that I'm going to like and I know I'm not going to like it. I was like, I'm just not going to like it. I'm going to be mad the whole time. So I'm just yeah. not going to read it, which is really judging something with no <laughs> point of reference because I didn't even know what the plot was. Maybe we should read that and talk about it. <laughs> no, no. The Gift. The Gift. The gift. We're, We're going with The, the Gift. gift. Uh-huh. By Laura. What was her name? Greenwood? Green. Garwood. Thank you. Julia. The Gift by Julia Garwood. It's on, it's on Amazon. So I'll send mm-hmm. you a copy. And what other genre, genres are we interested in? Does it matter? Right? Like, even if we're not interested, we should try it. Yeah. Well, I personally am interested in revisiting my love for Stephen King. I know he's horror. Um, okay. The yes. only problem with that, what? Dan, <laughs> yes. is that Stephen King novels are long. No, not all of them. That's not true. Well, yeah, the the ones that are most well known many are epically long. But no, that's not true. Salem's Lot, Lot is a, is a story about vampires. It's not very long. But I, ha, what is not like, very long? Are you comparing it like to 300 like 300 pages? This was oh. 350 pages. Like Pet Cemetery is not very long. No, Pet Cemetery right? is not very that's long. Not, Christine is not very long. Yeah. Cujo is not very long. Okay. Yeah. It is the stand, yeah. the dome. Those are forever. That's like a month of reading. No, there's a lot of books that are not very long. Okay, as long as we're not reading something that's like 1,400 no, pages No, I don't want to read that either. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. I just reread The Stand myself. Um, I just reread it after they released the TV show. And I, it's, it's a, that's, a, that's a lot. It's a lot. So no, I'm not interested in reading anything like that. It's just, it's such a commitment. Mm-hmm. Like I do love to read and it seems crazy that I wouldn't read something that long. I have occasionally read a soup something over a thousand pages but i'm just like i'm ready to move on i want to <laughs> you know what i know what you did with the stand well, this is ridiculous it was a, about a thousand pages when it was first published and the editor had made him cut out 400 pages and he put it back in and re-released it so now it's a 1400 page book he in, he increased it by almost 50 by 40 percent um and it's not that much more story. It's just yeah. like little bits here and there added up to 400 pages because the book was so damn long in the first place. But no, I don't want to read a book that long. No worries there. We'll find something that's right, a reasonable that's length. Not, but do or, you want to read like new St- Stephen King or old? I don't know. Um, I don't really I haven't care. read anything of his in 20 years. So. So likewise, 25. I hear he is, has a, yeah, he's okay, had a, a renaissance. Like <laughs> Someone, Someone who, to, yeah, is a, he just released something. I he feel did. Like. Yeah. He's releasing something like every six months now or something crazy. That is crazy. But someone recommended a book for Isla because um, he was here podcasting with Bert and he had, um, he had like a t-shirt on that said Stephen King is king or something. And I was like, Stephen King fan. And he was, and he's, uh, he could be my kid. He's a generation younger than me. So I was fascinated by that because I was a kid when he was writing all those horror books that he's The Shining and everything he's really famous for. Um, but he started, he hadn't read any of those old books. He read f- from like the present. So he had a, he recommended a book. I think I texted it to myself. He was like, if you don't know anything about Stephen King, this is a great one to start with. So maybe I'll find out what that was because I haven't read that. I've read all the old ones. Mm-hmm. I read 23 of his books by the time I was about 21 years old. Um, and I loved every single one of them. Uh, I think the only one I didn't really like was The Dark Tower. And that's one that people just love. It's like has a cult following and I just didn't really ever get it. I didn't read that one. I didn't get it. Mm-mm. So... But I mean, do we do we stick to a genre or do we go to a group? Like, what's another genre? Horror, mystery, mystery. Okay. Yeah. And there's, mystery. Oh, and there's, uh, there are all these sub genres in everything. So even in romance, there's like, you Harlequin? know, <laughs> well, there's like historical, like, you know, like oh, Bridgerton yeah. type, like, you know, oh. Regency era or whatever. Um, but then there's also like contemporary um, and, 
but likewise for um, any of the suspense or thriller type, there's like, you know, detective books, but then there are also, you know, sort of vaguely horror ish. Mm -hmm. Um, There, I think we have a lot of genre. We're (laughs) we're not going to lack for story. Is that a genre? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can get a book of short stories by nonfiction is a genre of book. Um, Historical nonfiction. Okay. Yeah. We haven't read an autobiography in a long time, have we? Mm -mm. Not an autobiography. We've never read an autobiography. Right? Yeah. We've just read like memoirs. Well, Miss Pat, but that's a memoir. It's it's more of a memoir than an autobiography, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Autobiography is a good one. Memoir. We've read a bunch of memoirs, but if we're revisiting a genre. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also want to, I, I do, I think it might be fun to read a super male novel, like a James Patterson, like, like super like men, you know, um, or all those movies that Harrison Ford started. I was going to say Tom Clancy. Yes. Yes. Stephen does, loves those yeah. Books, the Tom Clancy, <laughs> like something I would never pick up. It's not. Yeah. It's very technical and like military. And like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like that. How are we doing? Yeah. We're doing good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we should read something like that. That's very like, like that book that we found in the car that Bert was reading that, the, you know, she saw my dick and I knew she saw my dick. Are you sure then, that's you not know. romance? No, I know. Right. <laughs> romance it's bro uh, 50 shades of navy blue i don't know i don't know i don't know i think we should read something like that too i think you should ask your listeners to recommend either genres or Oscar, whatever yeah. i just found out right? that we, got, we can make up 12 right for the next uh, year yeah i mean easily 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 we come up with 12 yeah that's good then we can plan our year yeah and then I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can send you a spreadsheet. <laughs> we can I have themed spre- months. I enjoy right? your spreadsheets. You do. You do? Good, yeah, I do. Toss, toss. Thank you. Yeah. I, I enjoy my spreadsheets too. I can't function without them sometimes. I reference them a lot. Well, thank more you. More than you know. I am a spreadsheeter, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think that's going to be really fun. That'll be really fun. I can't wait to see what this romance novel is going to be like. That honestly sounds like the most fun out of all of them. I mean, I like the other ideas, but the romance sounds like it's just such a kick. Like we I don't and none of us read romance novels like ever. I think it's going to be really fun. I found out that um, I know somebody who just opened a room or is opening a romance bookstore in San Diego. No like way. that's exactly like that's what, all they have. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently there is a market to sustain this sort of thing because there are all of these subgenres uh-huh. of romance um, and romance readers are passionate and they buy a ton of books. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fascinating to me. It is. <laughs> my aunt uh, only read romance novels for years. Not, not my cousin who recommended this, my aunt. Every time I saw her, she had a romance novel and and she just loved, she devoured them. I guess they're probably really easy to read. Yeah, I would imagine. And you want to get to the next, you know, mm-hmm. makeout scene. <laughs> What's the next makeout scene? I remember, well, I have to say, I, re- I read Forever. Did you guys read that Oh, book? yes. 100 times. Uh, like 100 times. 100 times. I still times. have it. It's in our garage. I still have it too. I, <laughs> I don't even read know it. this book. <gasps> you are talking about? <laughs> I'm Judy Bloom. Bloom. No, you I don't, don't think know so. this book. Oh my god! No. I mean, it's a book about a girl's first time. No, it, never. Her oh, teenage yeah, relationship. Oh god! No, oh I my never. god! It's so good. Maybe we should read that. Oh my <laughs> god! He names his penis. Yes, that's right. So does everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They do. <laughs> the person I sleep with does. Yep. <laughs> Oh my God, where have I been? I don't I know. Been. You guys How are getting in trouble for not reading a book and you don't know this. You are really conservative. <laughs> you and Richard must be really conservative. Right? Oh my God. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could think of like four names right now for Richard's dick and I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Camille, I hope you're not listening. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Don't Turn about the one. podcast off. <laughs> All right. Right. Mommy says. <laughs> Mommy says. No, we can take that out if you don't want me to say it. Um, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the like, yeah, yeah. But uh, forever is Judith Bloom. 
It's uh-huh. a classic. It's a classic. Okay. Judy Bloom or somehow- Judith Bloom? Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom. Missed it. Never read that as a teen. I did. Wow. I school. wore it out. Uh-huh. And it's like a, it's a romance novel. It's about a girl's first boyfriend and their first time having mm-hmm. sex. And she kind of doesn't, she, I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've read it. Doesn't she like fall out of love with him and he's heartbroken and... Yeah, I remember um, a babysitter that I had <laughs> um, found out that I'd read it. I think I it was I was at that weird stage of like like our kids' ages where like I was old enough to be a babysitter, but when my parents went out of town, I was too young to be like just holding down the fort. Yeah. And um, so we had this babysitter, and she saw that I was reading that, and um, she said, "Oh yeah, that's that one. Oh yeah, the at the end." And she she said some line. It wasn't the actual line, but she extrapolated some line at the end. And I was like, whoa, that's that's what happened. And I had to reread the whole thing based on this babysitter's interpretation of what happened. And it was so obvious. I mean, it was so, so, so obvious. But you haven't read this, so you have to read. You have to read forever. I'm sorry, but you do. I'll you send do. it to you. So you can read it. Maybe I'll I'll find my. I still have my copy too. I kept it. It's like all torn on That's the side. The same. Oh my god! I read it over and over yeah. because it's a sex. It's a romance. Sex. Mm-hmm. And it she and, talks about sex yeah. and like how he's making her feel and her body. And I swear, I think it's probably how I learned what sexuality and being turned on felt like. Because your mom's mm-hmm. not like so your boobs tingle <laughs> when you know you, you don't have those conversations, and not that you need to be explained everything but when things are explained to you you go oh this is what's going on you know i don't know i'm having so i have to read another book the one of the reasons i wanted to do this podcast today which was kind of quickly was because dr drew and his daughter wrote a book about consent about sex sex Mm -hmm. sexuality and consent and it's for teenage girls And I'm podcasting with them next week about it. They're coming on my podcast, which I'm really excited about. But I'm interested to see what I I can't die. I couldn't dive into their book until I finished this one. Because I was like, Mm -hmm. if I pause this book, we'll be talking about it in December. (laughs) So um, I'm super anxious to read it because one of George's friends the other day was talking about being afraid of sex. Um, Very it was a very kind of casual conversation and she was like um, jabbering. She was just jabbering and jabbering and jabbering. She was on speakerphone with Georgia and me and she was jabbering and jabbering. And I'm really, you know, I really like this boy and he's really cute. And he's really, but I'm really scared to have sex. And I was like, I think that's really healthy. And part of it is not healthy, right? You, you shouldn't be afraid. This is something that we've been taught to be afraid of because it's become predatory in our culture. And that's really a shame because it should be beautiful. It should be fun. It should be goofy sometimes. It should be romantic sometimes. It should be all these things. And I'm not sure there's a place for young ladies to say, well, what is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be power, control, controlling? Am I supposed to be controlled? What's this about? So I'm really anxious to read this book and see what they have to say, because I bet you if it if it is what I hope it is, how empowering it would be to read as a young lady to go. You know, this is what sex is supposed to be is so many different things. You know what I mean? And I think forever gave me a little bit of, oh, this is what's happening. And this is how what's happening in his body and what's happening in my body and what's going on instead of just, you know, oblivion. Because my dad didn't talk to me about sex and my mom was very sexual. So I was very embarrassed about it. Um, Yeah, I think it's really easy to get the wrong impression um, because if somebody that you don't like Mm -hmm. is sexual or somebody who is not nice to you is sexual, it it gives the the impression that sex is bad or mm-hmm. sexuality mm-hmm. is bad. And, um, you know, we're obviously getting a lot of other messages about why sex is bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that book was so great um, because she just writes kids so well, mm-hmm. kids and teenagers. And, um, you know, they're teenagers, they're consenting teenagers, but 
it was just like reading it just felt like, oh, okay, they're not bad people because Mm -hmm. they had sex. Yeah. They're just two teenagers Mm -hmm. and figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring out love and everything. You think it still holds up today? think it's relevant should like, we read it should we do no, a double book watching. club <laughs> <laughs> oh my forever. god <laughs> no but like maybe we should. no i don't know any girls currently that are reading that right so why i mean good okay question, i, I right? insist so like, we read forever yeah but maybe is what, this gonna supersede the romance no it doesn't have to supersede uh, but or whatever or i'm happy to read it but i just i'm curious like why are girls not reading that right now well, that is a really good question so right? then, if it is this powerful for Two moms who have teenage girls. Why is that not like your girls haven't read it? No, my daughter doesn't even know about it because neither do I. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it's not. Um, it's not out there. Let me see the how world. long it is. It's probably it's not really short. Long. It's very I feel short. like it's maybe 200 pages because well, a lot of her books are not because they're written for young adults. Yeah. You know, they're not yeah. very long. Um, and I feel like this wasn't even necessarily written for young adults. It's written for like middle school Mm -hmm. age she oh my god yeah we should read this book judy bloom has a master class too on writing that i've been watching and she is so cute she's like oh yeah she's like a grandmother's she's like i think she's 80 years old seriously or like in her late 70s uh quite quite old yeah and she is so she's just like adorable she just like chats (laughs) in it she's super cute well, they have it on Amazon um, available, but I can't find how long it is, but it's not very long. It's it's like this is like this thick. And yeah. it's, it's one of those little it's bitty a little books. trade paperback. Little, yeah, yeah. A little tiny book. So I don't know. I don't know if we can do a double book club or not, but maybe we could we, do. Well, they break may not up. be we relevant, could do two. but I don't know how long is um, the other one. But I would be interested. I would read them both. And not that we have to book club. Maybe we book club one and then book club the next one the next month. If it's too much, maybe we get them both in hand and go, oh, they're both 200 pages. We can bang those out Mm -hmm. maybe in six weeks instead of four. Nice. Forever is 225 pages. Thank you, Halston, from the other room. (laughs) Halston's the best. I know, right? 225, we could do that. Eyes closed, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a really good question. Why aren't our girls reading anything like that? You know, I wonder, I feel like, um, I feel like I've said this recently so many times that my listeners going to be bored of hearing it. But I was watching Footloose. Was I talking to you guys about this with Isla? Mm-hmm. I was watching Footloose with Isla and I got really sad. And I turned to her and said, I'm so bummed at the way you guys do prom nowadays because you just bring a friend. Almost no one did that. You, who am I going to ask? Who's going to ask me? What am I going to wear? The hair, the makeup, the buildup, the, is he going to dance with me? All that stuff. They are not interested in that. They would rather make it easy on themselves and just bring a friend. Mm -hmm. There's so few girls in my experience of my teenage girls that have that steady boyfriend, boy crazy, he's my date for the prom. That was the norm. That was mo- the majority. You know, there were some people who who didn't have that prom date, which I'm sure stunk. But now they've like, don't want anybody to feel bad or or I'm I feel like. I feel like. My and this is me totally projecting, I'm sure that I'm incorrect but I feel like kids these days don't want to make the wrong choice. So they make no choice at all. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't go to prom with someone because he's cute. And then he end up being a bum. And so I'm just not going to choose anybody. I feel like they're apathetic more. And then they just go and they just want to have an innocuous kind of whatever time. It's not about what is. Yeah. I don't know. I was watching That's Footloose fun. going. I don't think you guys will ever have that feeling. That's interesting. I don't, I mean, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I think it's really interesting, but um, it doesn't make me sad at all to hear that kids are like going with their friends or whatever. I feel like I was in such a rush to grow up. Mm -hmm. um, And then people saying like, oh, you're so mature for your age or, oh, you Mm -hmm. maybe you look older than you actually are. And feeling like I was just like on this 
this freight train that was just like driving towards like adult, 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 adult. Yeah. And I wish I had hung out with my friends at the prom. I wish that I hadn't been all about like <gasps> some boy and the right boy. And then like I found out I a, somebody who's still a good friend of mine um, is my friend, a guy friend from middle school, Norm. And um, Norm and I had a deal where in 12th grade, if we didn't have like a a partner, if we didn't have like a serious boyfriend or girlfriend um, that we would go to prom together and sort of at the last minute I met somebody Mm -hmm. and he apparently he (sighs) held that a a grudge. I don't know if it was a grudge or just was very upset about that Mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. And Mm -hmm. we like had to talk about it like five years ago or something. And I was like, Oh, I was that person. I mean, I hate that I was that person for somebody. So I kind of love that there's pressure taken off and that it's just like, I don't know, that they can be young for a little longer. I don't know. That's my Well, I think that's not a bad thing either, but what do you think, Kathy? You were about to say something. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure that that makes them young longer. I'd like that there's not as much pressure, but they're also not getting the sort of experience in a safer place. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if their first boyfriend is in college when there's no like, not that they're necessarily talking to their parents about it, but I don't know. I just don't know that it is a safer place. I feel like, I mean, maybe it is now because our kids are sort of more controlled than we were in the eighties, I think. But, um, I don't know. I I don't feel like high school was a particularly safe place. I, I don't know. Well, at least my dad knew where I was going, what I was doing and had a curfew and a college. uh -uh. No, the boy had to come in my house and pick me up for a date in college. No. So that part of it was at least more regulated, Uh, whether what I did once I left the house might've been a different thing, but at least it was like someone's watching. You know, someone True. knows where you're going and who you're with and when you're supposed to be home. Where in college, you're just all on your own show. Yeah. Here's something I think this you are probably not going to like this at all. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, do tell. I know, right? <laughs> I have this. I have this. I don't really know what to do with these feelings about sexuality. Right. Part of a guy thinking that you're cute and you be knowing that the guy thinks you're cute and there's like this hubba hubba thing that's going on from a guy is very empowering to, or it was for mm-hmm. me, like, for instance, I think I've said this before. I used to hem my cheerleader skirts really short because then I knew the boys would look at my butt and I thought that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, obviously that in some people's perspective is negative attention, but I didn't sleep with these boys. They didn't try to sleep with me. They just gave me the hubba hubba and it made me feel really good about myself. And I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. But I think in today's society, there's something wrong with that. You know, I don't know what it is, but I feel like girls that do that these days are told not to do that. You should not do that. It's like you're using your sexuality for power. And, And men and women have both used their sexuality for power. Women can't overpower a man and force them into a sexual relationship the way that men can women. So it's less threatening, I think, when women do it. If a, But I don't know. Do you, am I making sense? No? Um, <laughs> yes. I mean, I hear I what you're out, saying. But... I just, I just don't see it not happening anymore. I, you don't? Yeah. I think it's actually really confusing for girls because uh-huh. I think, you know, look at media commercials, whatever, like everything is so sexualized. Mm. I think the, one of the tricky things and Steven is actually really annoyed and frustrated about this. He's like, I feel like, um, Lily hates all men. Like Mm. that's the thing these days, like any opinion, any, like men aren't allowed to speak. Men aren't allowed to have an opinion. Like women are taught to be so empowered that they don't value men. Interesting. And I think we're in alignment here because uh, maybe the problem is she can wear the skirt. The boy can't say hubba hubba. Right. If he says hubba hubba, he's an asshole. He's an asshole. Yes. And he's predatory and whatever. And he's so it's like, you're allowed to put that out there. 
But it just can't and, be reacted to. Well, right. And that's not entirely fair. No, it's not. Fair. You know, it's not OK for like 50 year old men to be gawking at people or 12 year old girls or whatever. But like, it, you know, and I don't want to like empower boys to be predatory or no. like gawking at girls in high school either. That's not acceptable. However, there is some, like, how do you have any sort of natural sexual mm-hmm. attraction if mm-hmm. no one's allowed to express it? Right. I think that's really confusing for teenagers. These or, days. or if a boy like, expressing it in a boy way is it, there's no, it seems it's so rigid to me these days is so rigid. Like if the girl is flirty and wears a short skirt and the boy goes hubba hubba back and then she's like, don't do that. That's so gross. Well, what the fuck were you doing the other thing for? You know, now mm-hmm. he's confused. And then if he's if he's flirting with her in any way, he's just gross. But when is the so gross happening? Because first of all, the so gross happened when I was in high school, when it's like it, if it did, was- but it wasn't damning. The difference now is I think it becomes damning and it's very rigid. But I see girls in the mall who are or who are doing the whole, you know, hiking it up and whatever and getting attention and loving it. And it's fine. I just don't see it so black and white. Like, mm. I don't feel like it's just turned on a dime. I feel like there's less tolerance for, um, you know, for non-consensual. Yeah, bad behavior bad behavior, but, um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just the sense I get from watching the teenagers I'm around, how they function in a group and how they function with their opposite sex counterparts. And I just go, oh, bummer, bummer. Is that how they're functioning in front of you? Like, how are they functioning not in front of you? Well, maybe, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I am an old fuddy duddy, <laughs> uh, you know, Nirvana yeah. did come out 30 years ago. <laughs> just saying I am pretty old. I don't know. I definitely think things have shifted. I don't think it's the same and I'm not sure it's in such a healthy way. Some things certainly are, you know, the dynamics in the eighties definitely needed to shift. Absolutely. I put it this way. But this is, this is one thing I, I feel like the a, pendulum is swinging too far to the opposite side. Like that's what always happens, right? You go from one side way to the other extreme. And I feel like we're going way to the other extreme. Here's what I'll say is when we were teenagers, most people by a senior in high school had had a date with a boy, right? Most girls had had a date with a boy. Most boys had, had a date with a girl. Or, you know, a homosexual, whatever. I'm, I'm just talking about heterosexual relationships at the moment because that's what I'm most familiar with. Right now, I think maybe three of George's 20 or 30 fr- friends have had a, a date. That's the mm-hmm. difference. I'm, uh, to me, that's a big difference. Like I can, I can count one, two, three. And that's all I know of, of her, of her high school friends, of her elementary school friends, of her middle school friends, three have had a date and my kid's not one of the three. So that's to me what I'm talking about mm-hmm. is that's really a shame that, that there's something's amiss here because boys chasing girls, girls chasing boys is part of human nature and there's no chasing happening because I don't know why, why is it not safe to be sexual? Is it not safe to be Flirty? Is it not safe to fall in love and have well, your heart broken? Your daughter's also go to an all girls school. Like no, I know they're missing have my point. No, I'm not. She has I, friends it, that go I, to high school. She has friends that go to co ed private schools. None of them are having dates. You're right. She's at an all girls Catholic school. She has mixers with the all boys Catholic school all the time. She was at the football game every weekend. So she sees boys everywhere. Not just her. There's a high school in that's co-ed. None of her friends there have ever had a date, boy or girl. She's got friends that never had a date, boy or girl. <laughs> and I go, that's something that's different. When we were in school, everybody at least had one date, just about. Mm-hmm. No, maybe it's different in Canada. No, I mean, it's too I cold to date. No, I, I probably I dated too much. I focused too much attention on dating. I don't know. I guess I just see whenever the pendulum swings however it swings 
it isn't necessarily good or bad. It wasn't necessarily good or bad what we did. And it's not necessarily good or bad what they're experiencing, that there's like pros and cons of both. Yeah, I guess and so. I wish that I hadn't mm-hmm. focused so much attention on boys. Mm-hmm. I wish someone had said, okay, enough. Like <laughs> you may be boy dating. crazy. Yeah. Well, I was boy crazy too. I was, uh, but I, I mean, I only had, I was monogamously boy crazy. Yes, likewise. Monogamously boy um, crazy. I was monogamously boy crazy. Serial was, monogamist. <laughs> yes, me too. But, but, but part of that was really fun. And part of that only happens in high school. You're only mm-hmm. going to go to the prom in high school. You're only going to have the sweetheart dance in high school. It's not the same in college. And it bums me out that of all 20 some friends of George's, only three will have that kind of fun experience. Maybe they don't care, but I loved it. And I loved it for what it did for the future. For instance, right? Mother daughter dance at high school, uh, not mother daughter, father daughter dance, eighties themed dress up. So uh, nobody wanted to dress up. And I, and I said, none of the kids, they all wore like ACDC t-shirts and Converse tennis shoes. And I'm like, that's not fucking eighties. Eighties is like big <laughs> hair, mini skirt, right. huge bow, lace, white lace hose. Neon. Come on, get, your, yeah. get where's your game here. <laughs> but my point is, and they don't dance at the damn dances. Then nobody dances. <gasps> and I go, look at Footloose. Every freaking fool on that screen is dressed up bow tie they go to these proms now nobody gets dressed up they're Mm -hmm. all the girls are wearing cocktail dresses with converse and i'm like where's the uh, uh, i want i want you i want it to be more special for you so then when you're i just get an invitation to the gala for our high school it is also 80s themed it is also costume. And if you don't think I'm throwing down, you are out of your mind. They are big on the I cannot wait. But I go, how do, it must suck that you don't have any kind of background like that when you're a child. Because if you don't do it when you're a child, like in high school, you're much less likely to do it when you get to college, unless you join a fraternity where they have all these goofy or sorority where they have goofy <laughs> parties. And if you don't do that, then you're less likely to do it as an adult. Mm. And it's so much fun. Fun, And I want them to have the fun part of it, not even the sex part, so much as the anticipation and the, is he going to like me? And, and like, uh, where's that? Maybe it's happening. And like you said, and it's just not happening in front of me, but I don't think so. I don't think it's not happening in front of me for all these kids that I see all the time. Um, What's happening for me with all these kids in front of me all the time is the stress from AP class. Mm-hmm. How am I going to get into college? Where are we touring for colleges? What is your end game goal? Who gives a fuck? You right? Read forever and get your rocks <laughs> off and then maybe you'll yeah. figure it out. You know, <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's like, now we're not teaching them to have fun or they're not culturally having fun with that kind of romance and relationships they're they're, everything's very serious you know like we have to include everybody which I agree with completely but at the same time where's all this fun everything seems so serious you know I think there's a lot of pressure in different ways these days than we certainly ever had and yeah kids are being groomed from the time they were little kids yes to be like to get to college like Yeah. yeah I mean kids Parents are enrolling them in things when they're five years old, four years old. And for their resume for yeah, college. For their resume. Yeah. Camille and I were just talking about that in the car on the way to school today about she we did not do that. And I said, I feel like I, you know, have ruined your chances in mm-hmm. a bunch of ways because we weren't planning for college when you were in fourth grade, when you were four years old. Nor I mean, should you have like, been. Yeah. Nor should you have been. And she didn't need that kind of stress. She no. deals with a lot of anxiety. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't the right thing um, for her, but yeah, I think that, I think you're right. They are under a lot more pressure. I, I didn't care. I just sent <sighs> off my college applications and was like, I'm going to get in somewhere. Like same. Yeah. I didn't go look at a college. I don't even remember the yeah, stress we tour at all. them. Like it yeah. was, yeah, it's very different. No, I think and, I think my college application was due like in March, right? And then you yeah. found out in like May, and you're done. Yeah. And my, I don't remember having meetings. I had one meeting with my high school guidance counselor. Here's how you fill it out. Here's how you fill out financial aid form, and that's all you did. Mm-hmm. But 
and I'm, I was talking about this today, working out with my trainer. I know we have to wrap up, but I was talking about, I was talking about how I do so much heavy lifting in my house. I was complaining and I get really tired of it. And he's like, you've got two able-bodied young ladies in your house. And I said, you know, I feel really bad because Georgia is on the varsity golf team. She gets home at eight 30 or nine every day, four days a week from school. Mm -hmm. And then she has homework and she's driving her sister to and from all this stuff. So I feel bad to go. And can you also take out the garbage, walk the dog, empty the dishwasher. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why, why would I ask? Exactly. But But he said, well, you did it, didn't you? And I went, yeah, but I had 30 minutes of homework. Maybe. Yeah. You know, I got at a cheerleader practice by five o'clock every day. And the only commitment I had was Friday nights, you know, for Friday night lights. So uh, it's not the same as much as we say, it's it's not the same, the same at all. And so there's no bandwidth given for them to be like, who's taking me to the prom? I'm just going to choose a friend and they have fun, I'm sure, but it's not the same. It's not like Wren and what's her name in Footloose. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Somebody needs a fist fight every once in a while. Don't you think we need a fucking fist fight in the bathroom from time to time? Didn't you grow a fist fight in the bathroom from time to time? It wasn't in the bathroom. It was like behind the hockey arena or. <laughs> yeah, you got to get away oh, from no, the. Behind the no, the behind the hockey arena was the makeup place. We, we didn't have a hockey arena, so that was an option in Bowden, Canadian, Georgia. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> they had several hockey arenas. <laughs> so what are we reading now? Are we reading forever or are we reading The Gift? Or are we reading both? I think I think Leanne will mm-hmm. update on her Instagram which one we do next. I think <laughs> we will read both and maybe book well, club well, let's them together. Start, we have to start with The Gift. I think you do. I was yeah. going to start with forever. Oh, okay. Um, I don't care. I'm happy to read both. <laughs> <laughs> You're with me, aren't you? Okay, we're going to start with forever. You're all voted contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm reading the gift. <laughs> I'll send you both books. If you want to read them both back to back, just let me know. Mm-hmm. If you don't, we'll do it forever. And then, because remember, I got to read Doctor Drew's book starting today, and I have one week, and it's and it is thick. It's not a thousand pages, but it ain't short. So I, I'll be at a deficit for sure. I'm sure you're reading something else also, but I'll send you both books. And if you look at them and go, oh, we can totally do this in a month, like late November or something or like that or like that, you know, you just let me know. Sure. If you think we'll just feel it out, we'll start with forever by Judy Bloom, and then I'll send you the gift. Thank you guys. Thanks for always reading with me. You know, someone today asked me if they could join our book club. And I was like, I don't have a fourth mic. I can't, I can't do it. I saw it's three C's. We're three C's. And we've been doing this so long together. Just the three of us. Mm-hmm. I like it. You could have a guest person. If there's something. If if Kathy's like, I will not read forever. Like, <laughs> I won't do it. I'm just joking. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, I really do appreciate you guys reading us. I know it. I know we are so busy. Both of you are so busy. You, Everyone's busy. But yeah, that's, I thank you very much. It is fun. I yeah. enjoy it. I feel like I'd never see you guys if we didn't podcast. <laughs> we wouldn't. We would see one another at Girl Scouts. At Girl Scouts. Mm-hmm. And that'd be it. Which, by the way, was amazing yesterday, it wasn't was, it? It was, was amazing. It's so good to be back. Oh, man. The girls are enormous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aren't they? They are. You miss, e- yeah, you missed so them. Tall. We saw them two weeks ago. I didn't see them yeah. two weeks ago. They're enormous. Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe how big they were. They're like adult-sized people now. Yeah, they are. Anyway, well, They're thank fun. you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about forever. Forever.